Hi, I want to talk to you today about connecting up capacitor banks, usually for power factor correction, in a three-phase circuit and uh, what the kind of two configurations would be, right? I mean, if you've been following along or you've been doing three-phase, you know that we have two options. We can connect up things in Y or we can connect up things in Delta. So if we are going to connect up a cap bank in Y, we would have, ooh, you know, here's our cap bank. It would look something like that, right? We would join up a common point with all three like that. And that would be a Y connected capacitor bank. And again, our, this video here, we're talking about a balanced load. So we're saying they're all the same size. So we're going to say they're all 200 microfarad capacitors. So we got connect them up in Y or we connect them up in Delta. So in Delta, they would look something more like more like that and connect them up to our, yes, we have a 12208 three phase four wire source, but because we're three phase balanced load, even on our Y, we don't need that neutral connection. So what I want to do is just kind of see what is the difference electrically between hooking them up in Y or hooking them up in Delta. So to start off with, we've got 200 microfarads. Well, we know that microfarad capacitor is going to lead to a capacitive reactance inside that capacitor. So I'm going to solve that XC really quick. So I'm going to use my formula. I'm not going to write it down, but it's XC equals one over two times pi times frequency times the capacitance. So in this case, I get an XC of 13.26 ohms, right? So now that's consistent over here. Each one of these capacitors is 13.26 ohms. Each one of these capacitors is 13.26 ohm. It's just whether we hook them up in Y or whether we hook them up in Delta. So let's do a little bit of calculations, right? So coming over here, looking at the Y circuit first, right? We have to remember each of these capacitors is located within the phase. It's lo located within a single phase of that circuit. So in order to do any calculations, we need to know what our phase voltage is. In this case, we're 12208, which means our phase voltage is 120 volts, right? So 208 being the root three larger. Now we want to calculate the current within the phase. So current within a phase, we're going to use the formula I phase equals V phase divided by Z phase. And again, remembering here, our Z phase is the same as our XC, right? XC, Z, they're the same because there's no resistive component inside that resistor. So I'm gonna go I phase over here, 120 volts divided by 13.26 ohms. It's gonna give me 9.05 amps. Awesome. The other thing we know in Y is that I line equals I phase, right? So those are, that's how we would calculate in each phase, any on each line over here, we're gonna have 9.05 amps of current. Do the exact same thing with the delta. So over here, we know that V phase actually equals V line. In a delta circuit, they are the same. The phase voltage and the line current or voltage are the same. So and over here, it would be 208 volts. So we actually see a root three larger phase voltage over here. Using that same formula, we're gonna go 208 volts divided by 13.26 ohms. And we get a current of 15.69 amps. Again, that's our I phase. The other thing we wanna remember in delta balanced, uh, in a delta balanced load, which is what this is, our line current is going to be equal to I phase times square root of three. Remember, because they're both going to add up, right? If it's an unbalanced load, we're using an HV chart, which I have a video on. You can check that out as well. But here, we're going to do that, and we get 27.17 amps. Crazy. So if I hook them up in Y, my line current, I can see is three times larger then when I hook them up in Delta, that's a significant amount more current on my lines, which could be very beneficial to me 
depending on my application. But if I can only buy a 150 volt rated capacitor, then I'm gonna go on a Y connection because I'm only gonna see 120 volts across that capacitor, right? So it's kind of, what, what's your capacitor rated for? What kind of line current do you need out of it? And you'll connect your circuit that way. The last thing I wanna talk about before we kinda of end here today is the power. So the three phase, oops, the three phase power that we're gonna get out of these capacitors. So our balanced formula for S3 phase is E line times I line times the square root of three. So we're gonna run that calculation on both of these and we'll see where that goes. So over here, uh, we would go 208 volts times 9.05 amps times the square root of three and we get around 3260 VA. And again, because I rounded my current so much here, it might not be exactly that, but it's close enough. We'll do the same thing over here, 208 volts times, in this case, line current, remember, 27.17 amps times root three. We actually get also three times larger. So I get around 9780 VA, right? Just connecting it up in that delta configuration. So if I'm looking for a really big capacitor bank, and I want to maximize those capacitors, I might be considering hooking it up in Delta. If on a lower voltage capacitor, maybe a little bit safer or cheaper even, I'd be looking at hooking it up in that Y configuration, just depending on my application. Uh, so thanks so much for watching this video. I have a whole bunch of other three phase electrical theory videos as well, which feel free to check out. And if you like what you see, please subscribe. Thanks a lot.